Welcome back to the Wang 2200F restoration. After having restored all the digital boards uh, in the previous part, link is on the description, uh, we are now ready to bring this to a conclusion. <laughs> the Wang will be back alive at the end of uh, this episode today, but the first thing we need to tackle is the keyboard. The keyboard controller we already tackled, but there is more to that than just the controller. Now, one of the things that is striking about the Wang is the the key switches. They are full travel, very robust. I measured all of them to make sure that they are working. Only five or six needed some contact cleaner to work again, but for the rest they were all fine, tip-top uh, condition. I've um, changed uh, the incandescent light on the side of the keyboard, but here I'm just showing you where the keyboard controller fits. We've restored this controller board uh, in part three, the previous episode. And that's where it fits, it's right underneath uh, the key switches. And then it's connected via that ribbon cable to the rest of the system, it goes into the backplane uh, board. Now there are these incandescent lights, as I was saying, I've replaced both of them, including the one that was uh, still working, I replaced them with equally incandescent lights. LEDs don't fit here because of the way the, uh, these lights are driven. So here you see me shrinking some shrink wrap after I installed a, a brand a new lamp. These are actually 28 volt uh, lamps. They are driven always by 25 volts on the one side and the other side is driven either to approximately zero or 25 volts so you the computer can dim these lights depending on whether you have caps lock on and so and so forth. I had to bend the terminals a little bit to fit it underneath or, or on top of the switchboard as you could see there. I've reflowed all uh, the solder joints. Um, some of them were cracked or looking very dry and I thought, you know, once I start doing it, I do it for them all. That's the other brand new light uh, on the other side of the keyboard with the terminals all, also bent a little bit. But for the rest, these this new incandescent lamps I found uh, brand new, uh, uh, they fit perfectly. I've also toned out uh, all the connections uh, uh, to, to this connector here, this uh, um, Edge, uh, edge of the board connector and I toned out every little diode uh, on this keyboard as well. So um, I know the keyboard is working, maybe something is wrong with the digital board, I don't know yet. Now uh, all the keys were removed and cleaned very thoroughly, I've also retro brighted them, especially because of the, the function keys, they were very very darkened and I thought that's not fine, so I retro brighted them as well. So after everything was washed, dry and retro-brighted, I started fitting it back together. It's actually a quite calming <laughs> meditative exercise to fit it all <laughs> back together. Um, these are the function keys, uh, that's the last one, I've retro-brighted them. And um, I don't want them to darken again, they were very very darkened before and eventually they will get darkened again. Uh, so to, to delay that, I'm applying a UV protector. Uh, it's, a, it's a fluid that uh, filters out uh, UV light. And you just need to rub it uh, on uh, the desired keys. So I've done it quite carefully uh, in the hope that they will remain light gray for as long <laughs> as possible. So this is pretty much it uh, for the keyboard. That's the conclusion of that part of the restoration. Now we have to turn our attention to the case. Here are some photos of the case in its original state. Very beaten up, very dirty. Um, I've cleaned them all and what you see here is already after cleaning I've then uh, sent them sent them to professional uh, painters so they have been resprayed. The results will come at the end of this video. And now, the big elephant in the room is, of course, the monitor assembly. Uh, there, there are components everywhere, on the board, on the sides, and on the bottom of the chassis, as you see here, a power transistor, all kinds of things happening in there. The PCB cannot be removed from the chassis unless you undo all the wire wrap connections that you see on the sides. And uh, I will eventually do that, but I will do that only if and when I find a new compatible CRT, because this CRT it's a little bit burned in on the edges. You can clearly see that a certain application with borders was being used all the time. 
So for now, what I did, uh, I, uh, what, what I'm about to do, I'm about to clean everything up, reinforce uh, some, some, some of the joints with uh, hot glue, a little piece of the permanent magnets that uh, regulate or uh, adjust uh, the image, uh, a little piece fell off. I know exactly where it comes from. So I will just put it back with hot glue. It's permanent magnet, doesn't need to be electrically connected. Uh, here you see the, the, the part of the deflection uh, circuit with the flyback transformer and the rest of the circuitry mounted on the chassis. It's very difficult to service this stuff. So what I did, I cleaned and I recapped, or I'm about <laughs> to clean and recap uh, this board. Um, the mylar, mylar uh, uh, high frequency capacitors don't need to be changed, but the electrolytic do. I wanted to change some more, but again, uh, there, there is stuff there that I would have to disconnect everything to change. So I would do that even when I find a new CRT with less burning. For the moment, what I'm about to do is more than, than enough. The image will be crisp again. Yeah, it will be quite satisfactory. Notice that the power supply of the monitor is there as well. Those two transformers are part of the power supply. All right, so here I start all the work. Uh, uh, I'm uh, putting some fresh new solder on the on the electrolytic capacitors I want to change, then desoldering them uh, with a vacuum desolder uh, 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 gun and um, with um, solder braid. Uh, people should not underestimate the usefulness of solder braid. Solder braid is very, very useful. People should use more uh, of it. Uh, it, as a final step to really removing all the solder, uh, it, it is irreplaceable. You can have the best vacuum desoldering gun in the world. Uh, if you don't use a final step with flux and solder braid, there will be little bits and pieces still getting stuck to the board that may ruin your fragile old traces and fragile uh, old pads. So that's not really a very good idea. So this is the work. Now, there was one part in which there was a 150 microfarad capacitor. Of course, I don't have one of those. They're not made anymore. So since you can, uh, uh, when you add capacitors in parallel, you just add their capacitances. I just added a 100 microfarad capacitor in parallel to a 47 one. And there it is already in circuit. So that's what I did to replace um, that old capacitor. This works very well. You can do that without worry. You just have to make sure that when you solder the terminals together in parallel, you use sufficient flux and sufficiently high heat to make a proper joint. These are the new electrolytic capacitors, including that tall gray one to the right and back. That's also a new one as a very high quality Nichicon capacitor I put in there. A uh, total of five electrolytic capacitors were changed, plus some cleaning and tuning of all the pots uh, that can be tuned. Uh, that little piece of permanent magnet is back in place. I reinforced some of the others with more hot glue and the beginning of the windings as well. And these are the five replaced uh, electrolytic uh, capacitors. Now, of course, you know, we, you, you do these things step by step and you remove a few components here and there. And you never have a, an idea for, of how much you actually did and how much you replaced uh, until you see it all together. So here is an overview of everything that has been removed from this computer and replaced with brand new parts, either because the original parts uh, were faulty, like uh, one of those uh, pass transistors. Um, uh, there was a, a large 50 um, uh, microfarad 50 volt capacitor that was completely busted as well uh, and the others was I just replaced them as a step a good step in preventative maintenance because if you don't replace them now some of this stuff will fail very quickly once you start using this computer more regularly and I know that and since I have everything out I just do it all now this was suspicious this is part of the cable assembly for the brightness and contrast uh, potentiometers. I thought, were these cables broken and they rejoined them like that? That wouldn't be nice. But once I removed the electric tape, uh, the cables had just been melted, probably because they were sitting against a uh, heatsink. 
So what they did, wrapping with electric tape, was appropriate, but since I have it open, I did the right thing. I removed the damaged area, exposed new fresh wire, and remade the connections with uh, waterproof uh, uh, connectors with embedded solder. Uh, these are better than the original wire. I also covered them with that blue piece of uh, heat shrink that you see there. I didn't show them that step, but I covered it all. So now even if it sits against uh, uh, one of the heat sinks with the fan on, shouldn't be a problem. These are the new potentiometers because the old ones were scratchy. Remember, contrast and brightness were very scratchy, so I put new ones in there. And uh, I prepared a brand new AC uh, fan, industrial level uh, fan, 115 volts, because that's the voltage this computer puts out for the fan, although it's a 20, uh, 230 volt machine, there is a transformer in between. So I just extended the wire and put the appropriate plug in there. The wire needs to be long because you need to be able to remove um, the, the top part of the case without breaking the connection. Uh, that's why the wire is long, the fan will be attached to the case. And then I also protected one of the boards with Kapton tape because this board uh, uh, sits right next to the neck of the CRT where the filament is and gets warm, so I protected it first. And reassembled it first without the keyboard and it's back alive. There is a ready prompt. Uh, the computer seems to be working fine, even though I didn't connect the keyboard yet. That's, uh, that's the next step. But so far so good. The cards are back there. I didn't put the separators yet, the spacers, so there's a lot still to happen. Uh, the filament is burning, everything is going according to plan. So eventually, of course, I connected uh, the keyboard, typed in a program to say hello world, <laughs> lo and behold, it works just fine. I took the opportunity and cleaned the face of the CRT very well with Windex as well. And this is a test of uh, the new fan. Uh, 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 I just connected it, I didn't put it in the case yet, just to test that it would work. And it's working just fine, it's a very strong uh, fan should do just fine to keep this beast of a mini computer cool despite all the burning hot TTL I see in there, hundreds of them, literally, a couple of hundred uh, of them. So this is an overview of the thing open. Uh, somebody on Twitter said it looks like, uh, um, you know, the retro sci-fi technology from a computer game. I think it's Fallout, it's called, I forgot. And it does look like that, you know, it looks like it came straight from, I don't know, the futuristic 1960s or 50s. <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend, who is holding the camera and goofing around, uh, this was the first old computer that she was really interested in. She, she thought it was very cool. She's an artist, so this says something about this computer. You can see a little bit of the burning on the borders of the CRT in there that darker greenish. So my girlfriend was listening to, to a song by Kraftwerk in the, in the background <laughs> and goofing around and, and filming uh, this. I, I let it run and I thought, okay, we use this footage because it's quite goofy and uh, as an artist she liked it and she's showing it the way she thinks does justice uh, to it. So now it's done, so it's time for the big review.
All right, when we turn it on, it will be like a jet fighter taking off because of the industrial AC fan I put in there, but it's needed for old computers like this. Those old TTL chips uh, become very hot. So here we go. Takes a while for the filaments to warm up and there we are. That's the prompt. So at this point, we are at the prompt of a basic interpreter. It's a basic written in microcode, not assembly, which allowed Bang to, to change the instruction set without having to, to redo uh, the basic interpreter and with customer programs written in basic, also remaining backward compatible, even though the instruction set uh, changed. Um, these little lights you see here and here, uh, this activates when shift is on. I can also lock, lock shift. Uh, and this one activates when a program is running. They are driven by those 7406 and 7407 high voltage driver ICs that I've replaced. As I was saying, these, these lights are constantly driven by 25 volts on one side, and then on the other side, they are driven by those high voltage drivers. So when the light is supposed to be dimmed, when you're not pressing shift, the other side puts out about 24 volts and dims the light. That's how it works. I'll type in a little program from the Wang uh, manual. Uh, I am in the keyword and capital mode. So at this point, if I press shift, I will just uh, get an entire command, just like the Sinclair line did. Uh, the advantage of the Wang, of course, is that if I don't press shift, I can just type a command which the Sinclair line couldn't do. So I'll just type it as per the Wang listing. Um, actually, this is not the one I want. Okay, this is the, the right uh, code. So just type it in and I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch it in real time. Okay, so at this point we have the code in, and then it's just a normal basic machine. I can run that code, it calculates the factorial of a number from zero all the way to the number, the factorial of all of that and the, the entire sequence. So if I put seven, it will display the factorial uh, from, from zero to seven. Um, if I put a large number, of course, it takes a long time. So I put say a hundred. And now there is an, an interesting feature of, of this computer which makes it very easy to debug a basic program. I can uh, run 100. I can halt execution at any time with this key, halt and step. And then the program stops. And if I press it again, it will step through the basic program and tell you which line it's executing. So next time we get to a print, it will actually execute uh, the print. There we go, it executed the print now. So you can just step through the entire program. It's very convenient. And if you're done with that and just want to run it, uh, that's what you can do. Just uh, run the program to the end. It is very cool. Now I'm here on keyword and, and capital letters. So shift will change from a keyword to the, sorry, uh, from the capital letter to, to the keyword. But if I put this down, now I have non-capital letters and shift to create capital letters, which is pretty cool. And now you can you have to type everything by hand because there is no keyword mode now, unless you put it back. And you can also program each one of these keys uh, as a, spe a special combination of functions. It's pretty cool. So here we go. Uh, uh, fully working <laughs> Wang 2200 uh, and F, and now this is out of bounds. That's why it gave an error. <laughs> <laughs> it's too large a number uh, for it to compute uh, the factorial. So maybe up to 50 it does it. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, see you next time.